Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Wardrobe here. I just want to talk about this um, game of Utah Beach I played. Now, I wanted to try to play Panzer Leader a little bit again, so I bought a copy of it from a guy. Good, good dude. Got it shipped out real quick, so I can get this played by the by D Day. Um, also came with a French variant, which is cool, and uh, I think maybe some other variant counters, but definitely the French counter. Um. But it, um, so I wanted to play that. Um, need to, let me close this window here. It's not showing to you, but showing to me. Uh, I'm going to try to do this. I played it and I recorded it. And, but it just, I was doing a lot of rule reading and stuff. I didn't necessarily get all the rules right. Strategy was not maybe necessarily greatest. And I kind of do some things a little out of order. Like I might, um, so you normally move fire first and then move. Sometimes I move some stuff that's on the other side of the map. I, I ask uh, for your forgiveness there, but I try to play it as close to rules as written in the original version. So there was, op there's a bunch of variants and stuff. Let's just move on. Let's just get to this. So basically what's happening here, this is D-Day, this is airborne um, attacking kind of the backfield. If you look up here, the beaches are up here. So it's kind of weird. It includes the B map and the A map, but I have no idea why, because you really would have no reason to go up there. You don't have time to go up there, to be honest. Um, anyway, so so I played this out and I decided, I, I saved, actually saved a log file. I rarely do that. Um, so uh, here, here's here's the goal here. Um, oh, the paraleader variant. That's another thing I got too. But this is not that. This is the first scenario in the box. So this is one you'd kind of learn on. It's probably been played a bajillion times. Now, um, You'll see I kind of learned some interesting things about the Panzer Leader. I can see why some people are all kludgy about it. Um, there's some weird things about it, um, like no op fire, but that, you can really see it. It's built into, it's kind of like Flames of War, no op fire. It's kind of built into the sequence of play. It, 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 infantry move one hex a turn. You're going to catch people on op fire, like op fire opportunities, and that you're going to catch them out in the open and fire at them. Um, there's some weird stuff they can do moving through woods and buildings and stuff. Whatever, man. It's just, it's the way the game was designed. The guy, uh, you know, they who designed it, just, it's no dummy. It was well thought out. There's a lot of things. Now, there's some things about it, sure, that I want to change. But anyway, like the artillery is the big one to me. But um, all right, let's just kind of walk through this. I'm going to maybe forget some things, but I just kind of wanted to give a little thing. It's happening on this day 80 years ago. So this is kind of the backfield, the airborne's back here messing with stuff so that the guys landing on the beach, which this is a scenario does not include, you know, they'll have a, a, an opportunity to get past here. So the goal of the uh, Americans, and I find this interesting, this is in the first scenario, choose one of three uh, objectives secretly. So before the Germans set up, so the American has to capture both of these town hexes, over here on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm moving the mouse around. Both those town hexes or this one center crossroad hex here in this town in the middle here of Nisi on, in the T row or this bridge hex. And I'd have to look. I wonder if the bridge hex includes both. This is interesting. I so So, and I had McMurray and Jeff on here, so... I, I had McMurray, um, before I set up the Germans, I had McMurray decide which one he wanted to do. So he kept it, he kept it secret as I set up the Germans. And then I had Jeff kind of help me set, set up the Germans a little bit, but he and I need, had neither idea what we were doing. So he checked out. He's like, I'm out of here. No, he was, it was late. Um, so McMurray um, decided that. All right. And I will tell you, if I were to play this scenario again, and I mentioned it to McMurray when we we're done, but we had no idea. I mean, he chose an objective. I, it was as good as any. He chose to go after these two hexes over here on the left, the two town hexes. So when I then asked him to deploy the units where he wanted to based on his, you know, secret, and, and you never tell the German where you're what you're trying to achieve, right? So I guess technically you, and he kind of did this. So he had some airborne and you can basically, you had to put them three hexes away from any objective that you were going to go at. Well, any of the objectives. So you had to be three hexes away. No drops in this. They, you know, it was like, again, the basic ones. They just said, put them three away. You can stack up to four units in a hex. 
I think you are limited to three units in this drop. I'm not sure. Anyway, no, maybe it didn't. Okay, anyway. So I've already clicked through in this um, this Vassal module a little bit in the log. You can't go backwards. So I kind of moved. He's already, I already, and I did all the playing. I did it solo. After he helped me set up, I, I did it solo. So he put guys over here, down here in the woods. One, two, three. Yeah, everyone was three away. One, two, three. These guys are all in woods. Um, these dark lines mean you can't cross them with a vehicle, basically. And you can't see past them. Kind of an interesting way of doing the line of sight stuff. Same here. This is a crest tax, blah, blah, blah. Slow tax. So, um, and I had put a guy in the town. I put a guy down here in the woods. I put this mortar. Nope, this is a 20 millimeter gun up on this hill to maybe cover if they come up. Uh, he put his machine guns uh, down here. Uh, this is machine guns as well. Mortar, engineer, the rest are infantry. He put one here. A rifle, two rifles, and he put two rifles here. Uh, I guess, you know, I guess these are kind of possibly to block this off. He was probably going to, he probably thought it would be good to rush this um, 20 mil quad cannon up there. I put the wagon in there thinking I would move it. That never happened. I put the 81 millimeter mortar here. I probably should have moved that at some point. Uh, the Germans do have this, uh, this might be a Puma, but it's a 2341. Um, it's a 2H, so it's got a, probably that little gun on there. This is a rifle squad with a truck in case they need to move, Case depending on what the objective was. In fact, it did happen that way. Uh, engineer. So in this scenario, the American engineer is basically there to help uh, with uh, close assault. The um, engineers allow you to do a shift right on the uh, odds column when you attack. So if it's one-to-one, -one, you change it to a two-to-one. They can also build blocks, destroy bridges, stuff like that. Um, but they have to have their truck with them and you declare that. So really that's, so that's kind of an interesting thing. I kind of read that later in. So really this truck should have been with this engineer to give him stuff to do, but he could have just been there for close assault purposes. And then I put uh, a rifle and then the security. So it's kind of cool to see a security with a little less, um, uh, defense. I mean, these guys are eight. It's pretty powerful. This guy up here again, kind of covering, Another quad up here on that hill. Well, he went full force over here on this side of the map, as you can tell in this setup. I've already moved, uh, started moving uh, the engineers to close assault these guys. That was one mistake. I should make note of this. Um, so let, let's just cursor through here and see what happens. I'm just kind of pointing there. I don't know what I'm doing there, why I'm doing that. I keep doing that. Oh, he's going to fire maybe. Yep. So, and I, at some point start, um, I don't know what I'm doing here. So let's just keep going through until we see some guys move. <laughs> oh, okay. So the American, I, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a chart. So the mortars, you, you, you designate your fire, your indirect fire and airstrikes and all that for the next turn at the very beginning. So, and you write it down on a piece of paper. As the, in this case, if there was any questions, I did like a 50, 50 or one third split, you know, and I'd say, okay, well here, here, or here. And then when that, when it was supposed to happen, I, I rolled a die and it happened here, here, or here. I just did that to kind of add some level of uh, variability. Um, so that, you know, so as the Germans say, well, and I wouldn't have put it here. I would have put it in one of these three. I hope that's making sense what I'm saying you designate a spot when you're playing an opponent you i would write down c7 you know map d c7 and then when that time comes i would reveal it and then i would i i roll and do the artillery the next turn in the indirect fire phase well here since i'm playing solo i kind of said it's gonna be i would center it and then say it's gonna be here or here or here or i might do 50 50 as i do up here later because i'm like well there's only two places you can go He's going to be in one of those two places the German might know that, might not know it, doesn't matter. The German's got to go anyway. So I'm thinking the German might want to escape these woods, go up here and go through here. So I like blast him out when he moves out. See if that happens. So that so I'm just trying to figure out how to use the indirect fire stuff. So bear with me as I kind of work on that stuff. So the order of events is uh, place your indirect fire, uh, fire, and then move. So now I'm just kind of doing a lot of trying to understand the, the module and all that stuff. So those guys, I think are going to fire on him. 
they fire, they do nothing. It's an odds based thing. Now, here's the thing. They're machine guns. They fire it to two hexes. And uh, I don't know how they're any different than. And they can, and the asterisk means they can fire two out. So they're firing at one. So two guys firing it with one firepower each is two to one. So that's a two to one shot. Um, you roll one die to figure it out. Um, whereas the airborne are two as well. And they go out to two X's with an asterisk. So they're firing their exact same firepower. I guess it's just someone there uh, to cover for you. And they're not going to be doing the assaulting and stuff. Uh, machine guns can assault, but they have to be with someone. Engineers can assault, but they have to be with someone. They can't go in there by themselves. They have to go with someone. All right, so they attacked, and I rolled a five, so nothing happened. Uh, this guy, I think, oh, yeah, he moved. I don't know what's going on. Kind of, all right, they moved here. The machine gun moved up there. I kind of forgot that he was a machine gun. I wouldn't have done this because they can't close assault on their own, so I, I don't, I kind of jacked that up. So he started moving in. They kind of separated up to go up there. Hopefully you're seeing all this. Maybe I need to zoom in. Let me let me zoom in a bit here. So boom. So he fired on that gun. Nothing happened, obviously. Oh, I did disrupt that uh, gun up there. See, it's it's ginormous on my screen, but it looks a little tiny on your deal here. So let me let me scroll up here a little bit and scroll down. I kind of should have been making more notes in here, so I know what I was doing. So fired and fired. Shouldn't have fired that guy because then oh yeah. So you want to disrupt them and then go in because when you disrupt it, it um, is it a, is it a minus one plus one? I think it's a minus one. You want low in this game, so it's a minus one if they're disrupted. It's a Minus two when you're the assaulter. So that could be up to a minus three, which would be great because you want low. So. So the German looks like the German more looks like we're. Oh, you know what? I'll talk on it. You know what? I'm going to change something real quick. Bear with me here. I'm going to change what I'm sharing here because I need to show stop screen and present uh, share screen entire screen screen two share okay got that yeah sorry about the beeping there the blinging let's change that as well it's so hard when you <laughs> i'm gonna silence the facebook there it's beacon beacon Let's mute that site. Okay, let's go back. Okay. What I want to show here is it does. Okay, well, here's real quick. So they have the scenario cards here. Situation one through 20, I think. Uh, let's turn on the the turn track here let's bring that up here so yeah that's the axis turn okay so this is good all right good 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 all right so that's bling bling uh i should have cleared out all the fires i did not on the americans like so when you fire you're spotted if you're in the woods I, sh I, I i do this i change them to spotted he fires on him Ooh, I rolled a one. Yep, he's disrupted. He's fired. So now he's spotted in that town. He's going to fire four onto that guy. It's downhill. Fired. Nothing happened there. Uh, the uh, Germans on the east side start moving up to try to, you know, load him up on a truck, start him moving. I don't actually know if he could have loaded and moved in the same turn. I don't think so. But anyway. Well, I sure do it. Well, what the heck? I thought I didn't start doing that till later. Oh my gosh, did I skip? No, I'm still in the turn. Oh, what the heck? Oh, this is weird. I do not remember doing that so early in the game. This is funny. I would not have left them in the... Oh, this is weird. Okay, anyway, let's keep going. So the security moves into that town. The rifle moves into that bridge. The rifle starts moving down because I'm like, okay, well, they're not attacking over here in this city, so I'm going to move all the troops on the east side to the west. 
leave the security guy there just in case something happens that I'm not aware of in the game, like some weird movement or something. Uh, that rifle in the woods just fires. He just stays there. So I decide, I, I decide as the German player, like, I'm just going to stay in the woods because I'm keeping these guys over here. What's so funny is I'm soloing this and I'm thinking this stuff. And it kind of works because you kind of, I kind of shifted off turn to turn. I'm able to do that. I mean, that's the cool thing about this. I'm able to compartmentalize, which is good and bad in life. In this case, it's a good thing. And sometimes it's bad. Like, you know, seeing someone out of context and or what or whatever. Or someone asks me a question, it's out of context or whatever I'm thinking about. Um, all right. So uh, keep moving through. So he fires. Um, okay, looks like the I did not change the turn. We're in turn two. The Americans are firing, or I'm clearing out firing. I oh, it looks like I've loaded up the. Uh, I moved the. I didn't even see this happen. Um, I'm, I moved this uh, Puma, whatever it is over here, it's not the name of it, I don't think. I don't think that's the Puma, but moved it in to defend this gun. Yeah, that uh, shows to be a problem. I changed the allied turn. Okay, like I said, I'm kind of doing things a little loosey-goosey. Uh, range of the gun, that's kind of a nice, always a nice feature to have. Mortar fires again. He sets it on to fire on that mortar, uh, which will come fall down the next turn. I really should have been highlighting where I was firing. If you're disrupted, you can't move or fire. So you're kind of done your next turn. Then it just comes off automatically. Oh, so his uh, artillery landed there. And uh, I wouldn't have been artillery. He would probably fired on him. Boy, I am just like just trying to figure this all out. I don't know if... You, I think you have to spot every time. I don't think... You can't like keep the... I kind of wish it'd be cool if you could keep it coming in. Like, I'm just going to keep dropping it. I don't think you can do that. At least I didn't understand it that way. I kind of realized this fired should come off and the spotted should be in there now. That guy shouldn't put a spot on that German because he's adjacent to everybody. Okay, that guy's starting to move in. Starting. To, nope. I change my mind, start moving in that way so I can move into the town and get that defense when I'm there. And I get that. There's, I think, I think there was a point blank fire thing. Oh, I just moved the heck all the way around there. That's strange. So I kind of do abandon the woods a little bit. That machine gun keeps moving up because I think it's an infantry unit. That's silly, silly boy. Oh, I moved. I think I realized, oh crap, that's, so I realized over here, I was like, oh, that's not infantry. That's a machine gun. So they fire. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm kind of doing things out of order. They disrupt, then they move up. These guys moved up over here. They move around. Let's just go a little fast. So I just said, I'm going to close the salt. So I can kind of figure it out. I don't know. I think that's just, so I got two units going in. Cat attacks, baby. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out how to place it so I can kind of remember and also narrating the game to you. So I disrupt them. Great. All right. Let me just tell you, let me just sum up what happened here. So the problem with this strategy is, for first of all, Infantry cannot fire on other infantry in a town because you become armored when you're going to a town. I'm fine with that, whatever. But the, so they, you cannot fire on them. It's, you, it's impossible. Like uh, Infantry cannot fire on tanks. They can only close assault tanks. So you have to close assault into a city if you're infantry with that I rating. Okay, that's great. Well, well then you need your mortar to uh, fire on them, to disrupt them. Because what's going to happen here is they can't attack. This is the problem. This is what happens. I don't, I, I can't. I kind of beat my head against the wall here. So what happens is, is a cat attack, they disrupted. You can only cat attack once. Now they're disrupted. Well, guess what? The Germans at the end of the next German turn, they're going to undisrupt. They're going to cat attack again. The odds right now, because you're, it's four against eight. It's one to two, but it's one to two minus two, but then minus two because they're the assaulting ones. What I wasn't adding in, was the plus one for the town. So it really should have only been a minus one. I didn't do that the entire game, I don't think. Maybe until the very end. It didn't matter. Anyway, you'll see. I kind of make some notes there you can see in the in the blog there. So I think I'm going to close assault the guys in the woods. Fantastic. All right, what do we got? We got, uh, I don't know if I would type it up here. 
Oh, I disrupted them. Now there you're going in with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven to eight is still one to one, but I got the engineer. It's now two to one, so that's cool. They're going in, it's minus two, plus one for the woods, which I think I did add, which is funny I didn't add it for the city. And so it's a two to one, so that's good. Minus one, still didn't get it. Okay, fantastic. How about up here? They're going to coast assault this. So now you have to attack everybody. So it's a four defense against one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's a two to one. That's that's that, two to one. With a minus two, there's no benefits for them. So this is really good. And I roll a two. So it's a zero. So it's an X for everybody. Everyone is deleted. And there's a wreck in the hex. All right, here's another thing, thing I learned about close assault tactics. And I'm not really clear. Well, I am kind of clear how to, well, I'm actually not clear how to handle it. I know you'll see it later in the city that you surround the hex. Because there's, you'll see the problem with that. So right now, again, they don't move into that town. I have no idea why that's the case. Why would you not occupy that town with at least one counter? No clue. So that thing was a little weird. Both these guys are dispersed, so they're going to be down for the whole turn. But if that hill that where that wreck is is super important, and these units were just in here, well, so basically what I'm getting at is a German, you can just go bloop and move right in there, and now they're having a close assault again. I mean, that's fine. It's the back and forth battle. <clears throat> It's tough to get into spots, but really, I just did that attack and I don't get to go in there. So that, that was a challenging thing for me uh, as well. Oh, and let, let me, let's go back to this mortar. So the only gun they have is this mortar firing at three is their fire rating into this town. If I had been doing that, which I should have been, but it, it doesn't matter because the mortar is halved when attacking uh, infantry. I think all all mortars are for sure. I don't know if all HE is. I think all HE is. So you're half. Oh, okay, I can kind of get that because HE doesn't have that super effective against armored and in town. Now, what's funny is this is just the opposite of a bolt action tournament I just played in where if you're in town, the HE will kill you and it does. So here it's like a nice shield. So it's a shield in here and bolt action, it's a detriment. You actually don't want to be in buildings when you're getting fired HE. That's another video coming up here shortly. Don't understand that. Okay. So this guy fires his mortar, but he can't because it's one and a half because he's halved. You keep, you retain those fractions until you get all the stuff done. So it's one and a half into eight. Well, you can't do that because you can't go below a one to four attack. If, so you don't like, just if it's a one to eight, you just bump it up to one to four. Nope. When it's one to eight, you can't, which makes sense, I guess, now that I'm saying it out loud. So this mortar cannot attack that. The Americans have no ability to attack this town except for close assaulting it i'm i'm saying it period that that's the only way they can take these towns so i'll just sum it up don't go for the towns in this hex go for the bridge now again i need to look at um what it takes to own a bridge uh if it takes owning both sides of the um both sides of it, then that's going to be a challenge because there is a, a city hex or a town hex on that side of it. Um, I'm just looking at the board here. So I do have this here. It's kind of cool. It brings back memories. My dad owned it and I uh, just kind of moves. Oh, I just dumped out all my counters because the baggie was open. Why was the baggie open? No one knows. That is awesome. Here are the counters. Sorry, I'm not using my good camera. So cool. Very tiny. Hard to read anything on there. I mean, seriously, that's a what? A R35? That's cool. Blank backs, because that's the way counters were in 74. That's fantastic. Well, it won't take much. I think only one bag came open. Also comes with an old general, which is cool. So neat. I mean, it's just great. Some of the old scenarios. Um... So they re they did a variant with par called Paraleader, and they did up the value of the uh, up the value of the Airborne because in here they're they're pretty. I mean, they are they're two two six two ones. The Germans are stronger defense. I, you know, I guess they have that because of the machine guns. Um, I don't. Know. Uh, Utah Beach, the bridge checks. Yeah, it says the bridge checks now. 
I, I, I'll, I'm not going to spend time looking deeper. I want to just keep going for you guys, but uh, I don't know. If, I, I doubt they have this rule. It's probably just the bridge checks. So you would go for the bridge checks because it's wide open. I wouldn't go for this town hex either because it's still a town hex here. You had to get two hexes. So now as the German, I would put, what, instead of doing this little contraption, I would put a guy here and a guy here. I'd put a guy here, just surround that city. I mean, put a guy here to, well, again, now that I know how it works, put a guy here and, you know, guys in all the city hexes. And then every time, because then the Americans could only attack from three sides. They're not going to be able to line, line it up. And maybe they get this, you know, maybe they get one. I was rolling really bad. That's kind of the nature of the game. That's another video I want to make. I, you know, why am I even playing games? Anyway, so moving on, let's keep going here. So I did not know you didn't advance. So these guys advance into there. So I make that mistake. So. Take all the fires off. Axis turn. I think. Basically just moving some guys. truck moves around i don't remember this truck doing this this early i thought this was later in the game but oh i move i think i i i'm just trying to figure out the moves and stuff like that so <laughs> oh fired oh that was a mistake okay oh i unloaded mm. i think i unloaded because i thought i would d defend this uh thing up here i don't know now that I know what that was going on, screw that. Just get up to that town, which if I would get, yeah, anyway. So now the dispersions come off and now we're going to start the turn three ally turn. I'm going to try to go through it. Maybe I'll just click through here and just kind of watch what happens here. Let me scroll up. I can't really zoom in much more because then I'll lose some stuff here. So let's just kind of click through here. Firing on there. Dispersed again. So they they did do a good job of neutralizing those guns so that that was good that was a good strategy um moved into the town moved right next to him again i didn't need to because it's freaking gun so i think up oh, here i'm gonna try it again now i got three units going in against him um sometimes i make the notes sometimes i don't okay well nothing happens there uh, two to one engineer minus two plus one. I rolled a four. So disrupted again. That's just going to come off. Nothing's going to happen there. It's kind of a, it's just amazing. Okay. So, I mean, uh, Jim over at sit rep podcast talked about, um, you want to go do everything at four to one. He's right. But there's so much, I mean, especially close assaulting a town with a defensive eight to get four to one, you need uh 32, uh, I had 12 units. I only have 12 units. As long as I can only get up to 20. I can never get up. Well, no, no, that's not true. 24, I get three to one. I could get to four to one with the engineer. So, but it'd have to be every unit. So if you're going to go for a town hex, you, you dr basically you drop all the airborne all around one town and you just go in. I, I mean, it's pretty simple as that. There's no strategy. There's no moving around. Don't, don't worry about the guys coming up behind you. Just go there. Then you got all these guys. If you take the town, then you got all these guys. You can surround the town with it. You know, whatever you got, you got it. Now that I see how hard it is to pry guys out, you just put like, put two. Yeah, I mean, right now these guys are twenty. These guys are twelve. Yeah, so now to you know to get to four one, you need forty eight. No one had that on the board, so I'm it's kind of rambling here. Whoop, machine gun alone can't do that. I change. See, I can't do that. Close cell tactics going in against the thing one to one minus two cat disrupted again. That was the. Uh, that was two to one. Oh yeah, because he's a three. And what, what what's he going in as? He was six. Yeah, yeah, two to one. So they're firing on the guys next to him. Yeah, I'm gonna go up there. I changed my mind. Oh, you can undo. Okay, it didn't work the last time. Try clicking it and boom, boom. Everyone's moving. Fire's coming off. Spotted's on. Now I turn four. Again, mortar, I guess. Disrupted. See, 
Now that's what you want. Disrupt it, then go close to salt. So even if you just put a disruption, you're going to kill them if it's a DD result. Yep, got it. Coast Assault, got it. Don't do it. You can't move in there, bro. Oh. Oh, did he Did he just fire in there? Maybe. Oh, did those machine guns just fire in there? Okay, those machine guns fire, and then he moved. <laughs> yeah, and I'm trying to remember if there's line of sight between. I don't think there is between those two hexes because he's on the lower level. So, no, I don't think so. Coast Assault Taxic, dispersed. You're going to see that a bunch. Here we go. Americans go in. Oh, we got him. Two to one, minus one. Boom. Todd got it. Yeah, that's good. Nope. And you don't get to do that. I knew. I know that now. Doesn't work. Yeah, it does help them because they would have been, where were they? When they move in from? Anyway, if they were here, it doesn't really help them because they were still got one hex. If it was here, then yeah, it helps them. So they got to move up. So that, that kind of maybe got them up a little earlier. Close Assault eliminated boom he wouldn't have moved in there the germans are moving now they're like getting desperate oh he realizes oh i can see those guys kabloom but he's firing four i mean look oh you can i think i can choose a i think i get to choose a target here i think yeah if so he's still firing at one to two but if he's firing at all of them, then he's no. Yeah, you can you choose a you can choose a unit to fire at here. With that H, I think so. Okay, one to three, five. Okay, yeah. Ally turn five. I look, I'm going to fire in there, but I realize I can't. Now, this turns out to be an interesting thing, too. These the machine guns out here and this guy here. That kind of kind of proves to me. So I, I, I saw some strategies working. I put this other guy in the city so he's not out in the open to get shot. I think, I think there's four. Yeah, you can stack four in there. Here, let me just tell you the, the, the uh, art, artillery rule, mortars, and the H's with parentheses around them. When you fire on a unit in hexes, um usually when you're stacked in it's a penalty to fire artillery in there because you're like you're just jam-packed and it's 250 millimeter or 250 meter hex 250 yards not in this game artillery is divided among all of them so if your artillery firepower is three in the case of this mortar this german mortar it's gone so that it was the same stats three firing in this hex in arab israeli wars they change it so each one's going to get a three attack against it now that's still now mortars are weak mortars I realize now you can use smoke. Who cares? I didn't need, I mean, smoke sure would have helped. I, I didn't realize I had that. I could use that mortar for smoke to screen the movement in or when they were adjacent to them in the open, which they had to be, you know, right? Cause I couldn't get enough stuff in there. Anyway, if this mortar in Arab Israeli wars attacks this thing, um, it'd be three, a uh, four attacks at one to two because three into six. So that, oh, if, maybe I should describe that. So two, two, six, one, the left is two, is their firepower two with the asterisk is their range six is their defense one is their move okay so the mortar attacking at three to six is one to two so you're going to get four one to two attacks okay that's cool you might get something it's still the low odds but you might here you uh, divide that three attack by uh four um is that right yeah four so it's going to be less than point ah, is that right shoot I'm suddenly like forgetting what I'm doing here. Um, well, you divide the number based on the number of units. So you, the more units you have in, the better it is for the troops in that hex. I get it in that that fire is spread out among all the units, right? Like if if that mortar, let's just say he fired, let's say he fired four shells, whatever that is, because these are platoons, right? He fires four out of four tubes, tomb, 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 four shells going in there amongst four units. The percentage of people, I don't know. I don't know if you see what I'm saying. I can kind of see it that it's being kind of dispersed among all those units. But also, they're also crowded in there. 
So I find it very interesting. I, I was trying to see if they wrote about that in the general at all. I think what I would do is, oh, and so what then people do is they'll move a truck or a wagon in there just to divide it. So now it's divided by two instead of one. So I do that at the end. I, as a German, I move the I move a truck into that town, and that it makes it now you have to divide. Well, I think why did I do that? Because didn't have artillery, but I did do it as it, it just added another defense factor. But if you did that, it would divide it by two. So what I would do is like, okay, if you want to keep doing that rule, you divide it by the number of, um, you can divide it by the number of units in there. That's fine. So you divide it by, if you had a wagon and an infantry, divide it by two. So now that infantry is going to get hit with a little less, but the wagon, I would not divide by two. The wagon, I would just also then, then subsequently attack it with the full firepower. So what they did in Arab Israeli wars is they decreased the, the values of the artillery a little bit, which makes sense. And then they just did it with each against each unit, which is great, but it's not that way in here. And so I don't know how you, that that's one way I thought about doing it. That's a long ramble. Let's keep moving through. Disrupt it again. Doesn't matter. They're going to go. So what happens here to these guys? So these guys all start moving up. I move the, I start moving the engineer up. I should have had some vehicles back here to transport those. You know, I lost all my wagons and stuff to close this all. The truck's busy. I, I'll just tell you, I forget this truck is in here, and I just start moving that infantry. I just forget it's in there, and I just start moving it with the infantry as with one move. It's hilarious. At one point, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I could have loaded them back up and got them in this town immediately. Allied turn six. So I don't know why. I. Okay, I don't know. Oh, he was going to fire there and because I thought the truck might move in there, but then it, he the, no one was there, so I just kind of didn't fire. I just canceled it. So all these guys are moving in. We're going to move in. All right, so here now now look what we got going in. Now we have an engineer. So now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 to 8 is still, I think that's still... <laughs> I think it's still one to one. If it is two to one, they disrupt him. Okay, great. All the Germans move. Axis turn six. Allied turn seven. All right. So yeah, now the mortars like saying are going to place here. That this is where I'm going to do a roll because he can pretty much go, he's only going to go in one of two places. So I'm like, I, so I did a 50 50, I think, you know when it comes time to activate it. So I think what I do now is I think I'm, I'm firing these. <laughs> Good Lord, man, load up the truck. You could have been in town by now. So I fire at that rifle stand. And nothing happens on those rolls. Oh, look, I dispersed him. Uh, who fired on him? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Maybe that rifle stand fired on him. And I don't think I would have done that because I wanted to move. Who fired on him? No, that, well, I think that was a mistake. I did that on accident. Axis turn seven. So he moves. Oh, he fired in there. They dispersed the, they, I fired on that whole stand. How'd that work? I think I dispersed the, hmm, that's weird. But anyway, the truck was dispersed. Oh, yeah, these guys down here start firing on these guys to slow them down. I think it works a little bit. Yeah, they disperse those guys. The other guy starts moving up. I'm liking that. Those tactics I was using, I felt good about. Like, I. Oh, yeah, so he moved in there. Truck. Okay, everyone recovers. Now we got, we got three turns to make this happen. Three turns at three to one. Oh, yeah. So here's I'm rolling to see where it goes in uh, one to three north. Axis. So I go north. So I'm actually going to attack there and it's three against eight. So it's whatever the odds are. And I don't do anything. Oh, I decide not. I, I was going to move him. I just said, no, no, no. Fire on that guy. So they fire. 
I dispersed them. So this this action worked great. I mean, this is what they should be doing. They're firing on guys moving in. So this is kind of the op fire, what I'm talking about. That guy decides to move in closer because now he'll be within two hexes and he won't get go down to half his firepower. So that's uh, good thinking there, Toddy Poo. Oh, I close assault, two to one with an engineer, three to one, minus two, six. So I'm rolling fives and sixes at minus two. It's I'm screwed. I can't, I'm not going to get any other results if you roll that high. So then they move in. Everyone's going to, they fired that guy again, fired, boom, move, move. Then I like, oh, well, I, that guy's going to be destroyed. I'm just going to move the truck in there. So the truck moves in there. Now he's at a nine. So it's just going to make it just a little bit harder to get the odds. I still, still think I get three to one though. <clears throat> Comes off. Allied turn. Put the engineer into the town just so they don't get fired on. Just trying to strengthen my position a little bit. I do the same thing. I'm going to place it in here. Roll it. I think here I pretty much know he's going to move into one place. So I don't worry about rolling the dice. It's going to be there. If I got all weird, moved it. This guy, he fires on him. And I just traverse him again. So that's really working great, honestly. And that really helps. If, if they ended up winning the game, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, that guy, uh, yeah, did I mean to fire that? Yeah, I fired. I'm always firing, but they're missing. It's kind of interesting. Close assault, three to one, minus two. It should have been minus one, and I rolled another six. Womp, womp. That comes off. Here we go. I didn't turn it. It's axis uh, turn nine. This version's come off, and here we go. Allied turn. This is my chance. I got to take the town. I think. I just force them again. This is it. They need to take this turn or it's a loss. Hilarious. They keep taking it. Keep taking it back. Wait, what did I say that for? This is it. This is the turn. It's a loss. So all these guys are moving in just because that's something I'm just kind of dinking around. Cat, three to one, minus two. It should have been minus one. Six. Look at that. So it's three sixes in a row. So, yeah, you're dispersed. In the log file, starting the log file. So that is that. Okay. So they lost. I mean, but look at it. Sixes, sixes, sixes. They should, they could have won. Uh, they could have won. Let's pull up the uh, chart here and see. Uh, no. Let's come back. Result odds here. So three to one. Minus two, it should have been minus one. Okay, so it should have been minus one. So a three is what I needed. I needed to roll a three. fifty percent chance, fifty percent. And because I was not doing the plus one, I was giving myself a whatever. What is that now? A sixteen, sixty-six percent chance of getting it, and I did not get it. This screams me to. I even have people now commenting on my die rolling. I don't, okay, like I don't want to blame die rolling on game wins or loss. I do not want to do it. It's a dice game we're playing. You're going to have good days, bad days, right? People are starting to comment on my die rolling. So I'm like, can you have bad die rolling? Because not only, so my strategies aren't, I'm not always confident in my strategies is as it is. But if I'm like, all right, if I, if I really do roll bad, and like I've heard some people say, no, man, you don't want to play this guy. He rolls great. And he does. Every time I see him, I'm like, but I don't get, mm. I don't know if I, I just, I do not want to buy that. If the dice are fifth rolling the way they should, shouldn't, should it matter? I mean, I'm rolling it into it, whatever. I mean, sure. I guess you could go with the vassal die roller, I guess. That's not a, maybe, but I don't know. Anywho. So I should have been getting it. I had a fifth, I should have been 50% chance of getting it. Three rolls. One of those chances should have got it. Right. But here's the situation. So even if I did get it, the good thing I was dispersing these guys, because if they had moved in here, well, the, the, okay, well, here's part of the thing. Then you, you kind of don't want to cap. Well, no, you couldn't. You'd have to cap. You have to take. Oh, gosh. See, that's just it. I had to. Yeah, actually, turn. I didn't even need to play turn 10 because it didn't matter. Because these guys, because I learned now, if these guys had got that thing in turn 10, it wouldn't have mattered because they still, no American had been in there and no American could move in there. So you, they would have had to take it on nine and then advance in there. So you wouldn't want it, if you took it on turn nine, let's say you cleared him out in turn nine. This guy moves in here. Let's say he's not dispersed. 
and turn 90 moves in there. Well, then they'd move in there and then it'd be done. Great. Okay, so you have to do things a turn early. And I, Jim talks about that in the sit rep. You, and you want a game where you have to think, oh, gosh, I yelled there. You want a game you have to think about two turns ahead, three turns ahead. That's fine. I'm good with that. That's fun to kind of try to figure that out. So one thing you want to do, well, you want to spread your guys out, but not too thin because you want good odds on stuff, right? And the reason you'd want to spread it out because – now this guy can't get in there. Now he might fire on this guy and destroy. That's, that's another challenge. So doing that because now he's now you got two guys firing on a guy, disrupting him and maybe deleting him and disrupting. Him. They can't go in. So it's definitely a challenge. I just can't imagine a city fight. I don't even know how you'd do it. I mean, I, I saw a guy play. I don't even know how you'd play Arnhem. There's an Arnhem scenario in here. I'm like, good lord, man. I think there, though, they give them some guns, which would help. So next time, go for the go for the the, the bridge checks here. Now the German could. Well, now again, now that I know cat attack and how that works, I mean, good night. Um, just load this hex up with uh, units and then just kind of keep dropping them in. Anyway. It, as I talked through it, I did have fun. I didn't really have to look up the rules too much. Yeah, I got something wrong. Maybe I should have. It's a very, it's a very straightforward game. The, the line of sight's the hardest thing, just trying to figure out who what you can see past these hexes and stuff, right? But it's pretty clear. Like just remembering, and I have a trouble remembering that anyway. Every game seems a little different. Can you see down this hex spine and all that stuff? In this case, I think you cannot. Um and I didn't even come across, there's a thing they call Panzerbush because like if you move, how does it work? Like you can move, I thought moving, anyway, I think there's something about moving in the woods or cities and you can't see them. So they're still not spotted. I don't know if you can shoot at uns, unspotted hexes. I don't think you can. There's no speculative fire, I don't think. Anyway, that's that, that's Utah. Thanks for joining me. That's a long time. 47 minutes. Good Lord, man. For a short, that's a turn, 10 turn game. That's four minutes a turn. Okay. That's that. Thanks all for watching. Uh, keep watching. We got a lot of D-Day, D-Day content on Hex to Hex. Um, you'll see McMurray's videos on my channel and then ASL spotting rounds got stuff. We got stuff going for the next, uh, at least six, six through the 15th. Now my stuff, well, anyway, spoiler alert. Um, but we should, most of us will have stuff going through the 15th. It might just be Hex to Hex.